We've got a walk-in cooler control panel that has a faulty light. Now, the light that's existing is not the same as this one, so we're gonna have to go in and figure this one out. So here's the panel for the walk-in box. We got two systems, that's why we have two controllers. We got some alarm lights and operating lights here. This is the light that is currently not working that we have to change out. Now inside here, we have a bunch of switches. We can switch them over, test the alarms. Uh, we have override and system one and two switchovers. So every month what I do is I switch over system one and system two for equal run times. But in the event of an emergency, this controller right here, this Honeywell controller picks up high and low events and will automatically switch over to system two if there's a problem. So right now, let me show you this light here. We're gonna take our meter, we're gonna put the meter leads in here. We're gonna override system two, which should bring that light on, give us voltage, but that light is inoperable. So I'll show you right now. So I have overridden system two. There's our voltage. There's our meter leads inside the light socket terminals. Voltage present, but our light is not operating. So we're gonna change this light out. So one thing here is this light existing and this light they're two different manufacturers. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get this thing in and wire it up using these pieces here. So here's the original setup, the light and the nut. This one's, uh, the new one's Schneider Electric. It's a little bit different. So obviously we're gonna have to slide that into the panel and put the label on. And then this piece here, it just connects like that. And then it's got a piece to, to tighten up. But if you wanna take these apart, there's a little latch down here that we have to pull. And once we pull down that latch, we can take these apart. If you don't pull on that latch, they're stuck together like that. So let's figure out how we're gonna get this into the panel. And then obviously we need to mount the light and wire it. So naturally we're gonna turn system two back off. We're gonna double check with the meter, leads in. No power, so we're safe to work on this light. And even though we don't have power there, what we're going to do to be on the safe side is shut the breaker off to the entire panel. So now these two pieces are fastened in, what we got to do is tighten this screw up. So now it's nice and tight on the other side. So we have a nice tight fit, make sure none of the wires are in the way. So that's a nice tight fit right there. Once we have this assembly in place, the LED light, which is 110 volts, is very easy to install. It's got an opening. This metal assembly part has an opening at the top and at the bottom, and the light just kind of pushes into place, and it's nice and firmly in position. So we have X1 and X2 terminals, and we're going to take our wires, and we're going to tie them in, and we're going to test it out. So system one is still on, but we've overridden system two to test this light out. Now if we come back here, we can see that the light is currently on. If we go to the front, that light is now working. So you can see there's a clear difference between the existing set of lights and the newer one. We couldn't get the existing light, so we went with the Schneider Electric, which was available. But all they need to do is make sure this panel is working. They know system two is on when system two is now on. Before they didn't because the light was off. So now they've got a fully functioning working panel and that's the main goal here guys. Happy HVACing.